Henri Matisse, a brief biography. Henri Matisse was a French painter, sculptor, draughtsman, and printmaker, who is regarded as one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. Matisse, along with Pablo Picasso, is regarded as one of the artists who revolutionized the field of visual arts in the opening decades of the 20th century. He was known for his use of expressive colors and original draughtsmanship, making him a leading figure in modern art. Henri Matisse was born on 31 December 1869 in Le Coteau-Cambresis, a commune in the Nord department in northern France. Matisse was the oldest son of a wealthy grain merchant and grew up in Bohain en Vermandois, a commune in the department of Aisne in Hautes de France. In 1887, Matisse, aged 18, went to Paris in order to study law. After qualifying, he began working as a court administrator in his hometown. In 1889, while recuperating after suffering from an attack of appendicitis, his mother brought him some art supplies. This was when he first began to paint. Matisse later described the event as discovering a kind of paradise, after which he decided to become an artist. His decision disappointed his father, who did not approve of his son's choice of career. But Matisse stood strong and was adamant to act on his decision. And so in 1891, aged 22, he returned to Paris and enrolled at the Academy Julian, a private art school for painting and sculpture. At the art school, Henri Matisse became a student of William Adolphe Bouguereau, a French academic painter, and Gustave Moreau, a major figure in the French symbolist movement. Matisse began by painting landscapes and still lifes in a traditional style, eventually becoming quite good at it. He was introduced to and inspired by the works of great artists such as Nicolas Poussin, Jean-Antoine Watteau, Jean-Baptiste Simeon Chardin, and Edouard Manet. He was also greatly influenced by Japanese art. Matisse admired Chardin to such an extent that as a student he made copies of four of Chardin's paintings. In 1896, Henri Matisse visited John Russell, an Australian Impressionist painter, on the French island of Belle Isle. Russell introduced Matisse to the Impressionist art movement and to the work of the great Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh. Russell also explained color theory to him. This meeting with Russell had a profound impact on Matisse, provoking him to completely change his style of painting. He abandoned his dull, earth-colored palette and began to use bright, expressive, and vibrant colors instead. The same year, Matisse exhibited five of his paintings in the Salon of the Société Nationale des Beaux-Arts. Out of the five paintings, two were bought by the state. In 1898, Henri Matisse, aged 29, married Amélie Perrier. The couple raised their two sons, Jean and Pierre, along with Marguerite, the daughter Matisse had with a model named Caroline Joblau. Both Amélie and Marguerite often served as models for Matisse. In 1898, Henri Matisse went to London at the suggestion of Danish-French Impressionist painter Camille Pissarro, in order to study the paintings of the English Romantic painter William Turner. After a brief trip to Corsica, Matisse returned to Paris in early 1899 and began working beside Albert Marquette, a French painter associated with the Fauvist movement. Matisse and Marquette became lifelong friends. During this time, Matisse also met other artists such as Jean Puy and André Durain, whose works he greatly admired. He studied the works of all the artists he admired with deep interest and even went into debt purchasing their artworks. Matisse owned a drawing by Vincent van Gogh, and Paul Cézanne's Three Bathers, which he displayed in his home. Cézanne's sense of pictorial structure and color inspired him. In Matisse's early paintings, roughly from 1898 to 1901, he frequently uses the divisionist technique he adopted after reading an essay by Paul Signac. Divisionism was a style in neo-impressionist painting defined by the separation of colors into individual dots or patches which interacted optically. Matisse's paintings of 1902-1903 are much more somber, revealing a preoccupation with form. After making his first attempt at sculpting by copying a work of the French Romantic sculptor Antoine Louis Berry, Matisse began working at a sculpture with clay eventually finishing the slave in 1903. 
Henri Matisse, along with André Durain, co-founded the Fauvist movement around 1900. The two artists became leaders and pioneers of a new style of painting that emphasized strong and expressive colors over realistic and representational ones used by the Impressionists. In 1904, Matisse held his first ever solo exhibition at the Gallery of Amboise Vollard, a French art dealer regarded as one of the most important dealers in contemporary French art at the beginning of the 20th century. The exhibition was not a success. But Matisse was not in the least deterred by its failure. He continued to paint in the Fauvist style and his fondness for bright expressive colors became more and more pronounced. The same year, Matisse painted Lux, Calm et Volupté, Luxury, Calm and Pleasure, his most important work which is considered the starting point of Fauvism. The painting is a vibrant and dynamic work in the Neo-Impressionist style. In 1905, Henri Matisse and a group of artists known as Favs, held an exhibition at the Salon d'Automne. Matisse displayed two of his paintings, Woman with the Hat and Open Window. The exhibition garnered mostly negative attention, with Matisse's Woman with the Hat receiving harsh criticism from the critics. But in spite of this criticism, the painting was purchased by American art collectors Gertrude and Leo Stein. The sale of his painting motivated Matisse to carry on in the direction he intended to go. During this period, most of Matisse's work received a lot of criticism, making it very difficult for him to earn money through his art and provide for his family. The Fauvist movement lasted only for a few years, roughly from 1904-1908, having a total of just three exhibitions. After 1906, the movement went into decline. But this did not affect Matisse's career, as many of his finest works were yet to be created. By then, Matisse had become an active part of a gathering of artistic talent in Montparnasse. Although he did not exactly fit in with the crowd due to his conservative appearance and bourgeois background and work habits, he still continued to absorb new styles and influences. In 1906, Henri Matisse traveled to Algeria, where he carefully studied African art and primitivism which is a mode of aesthetic idealization that either emulates or aspires to recreate the primitive experience. In 1910, Matisse also visited an exhibition of Islamic art in Munich, which led him to spend two months in Spain studying Moorish art. In 1912, he visited Tangier, Morocco, and stayed there for the next seven months. While working in Tangier, he made several changes to his style, such as an increase in the use of the color black, the influence of African art on Matisse's subsequent works was obvious. He displayed a new boldness in the use of intense, unmodulated colors, such as in the red studio painting. In the first decade of the 20th century, the American art collector Gertrude Stein and her brothers, Michael and Leo Stein, were the main supporters of Matisse's paintings. Later on, Gertrude Stein's two American friends, Clarabelle and Etta Cohn became important patrons of Matisse and Picasso, collecting hundreds of their paintings and drawings. It was at Stein's salon that Henri Matisse first met Pablo. Picasso. The two became lifelong friends and rivals, each establishing themselves as pioneers and leaders of the modern art movement. The works of Matisse, Picasso, Cezanne, and Renoir dominated Stein's collection. While Michael's wife Sarah's collection mostly comprised Matisse's artworks, Matisse also had a long association with Russian businessman Sergei Shukin, who became an art collector mainly of French Impressionist and Post-Impressionist art. He became a major patron of Matisse. Sergei decorated his mansion with the artwork of Matisse. Matisse even created one of his most iconic paintings La Danse the Dance 1909, specifically for Shukin as part of a two-painting commission, the other one being Music 1910. La Danse was a key point of Matisse's career and in the development of modern art. In 1907, Matisse's friends organized and financed the Academy Matisse in Paris, a private, non-commercial school in which Matisse instructed young artists. The idea for the academy came from the Steins. Matisse often pushed his students to think outside of the lines and to follow their visions. The academy operated until 1911 when it was finally shut down. In 1917, 
Henri Matisse left Paris and moved to Simmies on the French Riviera. His work in the decade following the end of the war displays a relaxation and softening of his approach, similar to the neoclassicism of Picasso. During this period, Matisse painted quite a few Orientalist odalisque paintings. An odalisque was basically a chambermaid or a female attendant in a Turkish seraglio, particularly the court ladies in the household of the Ottoman Sultan. Even though many art critics found these works of his to be shallow and decorative, the paintings nevertheless became quite popular. Matisse continued to actively collaborate with other artists, absorbing and learning from them as much as possible. The result of these collaborations was that a new style began appearing in his work from the 1930s onward. His work displayed bolder simplification and renewed vigor. In 1939, Henri Matisse's wife, Amélie, ended their marriage of 41 years on suspicion that he was having an affair with Lydia Delektorskaya, a young Russian refugee who had found temporary work with the Matisses as a studio assistant and domestic help, and then later on as a model for Matisse's paintings. When Matisse sacked Lydia in order to prevent his wife from leaving him, Lydia tried to shoot herself in the chest. Miraculously, she survived, but Amélie left Matisse anyway bringing an end to their marriage. Upon Matisse's request, Lydia moved in with him again and worked with him for the rest of his life, running the household, typing his correspondence, keeping records, paying the bills, coordinating his business affairs, and assisting in the studio. In June 1940, when the Nazis invaded France, Matisse briefly contemplated leaving France for Brazil in order to escape the occupation, but later changed his mind and remained in Nice. He remarked that if everyone who had any value left France, then what would remain of France? Matisse, along with other non-Jewish artists, was allowed to exhibit his art without any serious problems. But as far as the Jewish artists were concerned, their works were banned and removed from all French museums and galleries. Even though Matisse was isolated in Nice throughout the war, the rest of his family actively participated in the French resistance. His son, Pierre, who was by then an art dealer in New York, helped the anti-Nazi French and Jewish artists he represented to escape France and flee to America. Matisse's estranged wife, Amélie, was a typist for the French underground and was even jailed for six months and his daughter, Marguerite, who had played an active part in the French resistance, was almost tortured to death by the Gestapo in a Rennes prison. She was then sent on a train to Ravensbrück concentration camp in Germany but managed to escape when the train was halted during an Allied air raid. She survived in the woods until she was finally rescued by fellow resistors. In 1941, Henri Matisse, aged 72, was diagnosed with abdominal cancer. He underwent surgery which was successful but resulted in some serious complications from which he nearly died. After the surgery, Matisse was left bedridden for months, making it incredibly difficult for him to paint and sculpt like before. This was when he turned toward a new style of art. Taking the help of his assistants he began creating cut paper collages. He cut sheets of paper, which were usually pre-painted with gouache by his assistants, into different shapes of varying sizes and colors. Then he would arrange and rearrange them until he was able to create lively compositions. Initially, Matisse created cutouts that were small and modest in size. But as he began to enjoy the process and see the cutouts as a completely new art form on its own, he began to experiment more eventually creating mural size works. In 1943, Matisse moved to Vence, a commune in the hills of the Alps Maritime Department, where he began working on his first major cutout project, an art book titled Jazz. The book contained prints of colorful cut paper collages accompanied by Matisse's written thoughts. The limited edition book was first published in September 1947 by art publisher Terriot. Post the publication and success of the book, Matisse began producing more such cutouts that also included large mural size ones. In the final decade of Matisse's life, the cutout technique became his primary medium for creating artwork. On 3 November 1954, Henri Matisse, aged 84, died of a heart attack. 
Matisse is interred in the cemetery of the monastery Notre Dame de Simis, in the Simis neighborhood of Nice. Henri Matisse is regarded as one of the most important artists of the 20th century, who helped to define the revolutionary developments of modern art. Matisse's work, along with Picasso's, is responsible for significant and radical developments in the fields of painting and sculpting. These developments laid down the foundations of modern art. Matisse, as one of the pioneers of modern art, helped change the way art was perceived and appreciated. In 1952, Matisse established a museum dedicated primarily to his work in Le Coteau Cambresis. The museum is now the third largest collection of his works in France. In 1963, the Musée Matisse, a municipal museum dedicated to Matisse's work, was opened in Nice. The museum has one of the world's largest collections of his works, tracing his artistic beginnings and his evolution through to his last works. Without a doubt, Matisse's work will continue to inspire artists for generations to come.